Thank you for tuning into White Centipede Noise Podcast. Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. This podcast is made possible by viewer and listener support. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider supporting it at patreon.com slash white centipede noise. White Centipede Noise is a label and mail order based in Germany, releasing top quality noise on tape, CD, and vinyl. White Centipede Noise is also the premier EU-based distributor of international noise. Visit whitecentipedenoise.com to see available label releases and weekly distro updates. All right. Hello and welcome to White Centipede Noise Podcast, live from Crew Transmissions Festival in Leiden, Netherlands. I'm here with Jim Breitfeld. Breitfeld. Yeah. He organized this festival. He's, uh, he does Charnel Ground. Tell us about Charnel Ground and tell us about this festival. Uh, Charnel Ground is the name that I use for, for shows in, in, in Leiden. I started in 2018. I thought about giving it a name, so it will stick with people for the shows. And uh, was Charnel Ground for shows before it became a label? Yeah, it was first just for promotion, just putting on noise shows, and then uh, about last year I finally decided to start releasing stuff and turn it into a label as well. Okay, yeah. cool. And uh, is this the first festival of this size you've done? Yeah, yeah. After. The last two years, I had to cancel every normal size show, so yeah. I thought it would be time to just go full on out and uh, start a festival. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a lot of like energy and, 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 and excitement around this festival happening? Yeah, well, especially since you started promoting it with uh, the White Centipede Noise. After that, I noticed more interest from, from people from other countries. I got mails from people in Italy. and Cool, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, how did you choose like the lineup? What was your, what was your approach? Or what's, you know, sonically, what's your, what's your concept behind putting on a festival like this? Well, the, the lineup is basically a selfish thing for myself. I just book the people that I like and ask the ones I like. And I'm mostly orientated at harsh noise and sure. some power electronics. Yeah. Yeah, so. It was easy for me. I just had a list of people I wanted to ask already, and pretty much everyone said yes. So yeah, it worked out well. It's great how it worked out, and it's also like pure coincidence that you know I was also like releasing a tape by Vincent Dallas and Moosehead, and they were all also coincidentally playing at the same time. So it's like I feel like it's a really good uh, culmination of energies. And after two years of nothing possible, yeah. I think it's uh, everyone feels like it's good to be finally back at it so really appreciate you doing this um, thank you what do you got you have anything else planned for this year in terms of uh, Charnel Ground and the uh, and shows or fest or label or anything like that well, we, there's still one show that we want to do there was one show two, about two months ago that we had to postpone with Sister Rossi who I'm playing with right. tonight yeah, yeah. and Swartfit who was playing tonight with uh, Coma Cluster yeah and so we we still need to book a new date for that one. And okay. I, I want to at least have one or two other shows this year. And I'm, I'm currently busy with the next few releases, inviting people for them. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe two or three releases this yeah. year. Yeah. What do you think is the future of uh, live noise in Europe in the coming year or two? Well, I hope it becomes more, because that's what I notice now with the festival, that a lot of people are basically, like, finally... A festival again after Noise Fest stopped, because that used to be the place to go to for a noise. And you have in Eastern Europe, Sasa, I don't know how to pronounce Sasa, a Noise Fest. They do it in, in an old mine. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I it's don't a know. big Noise yeah. Fest, but I haven't heard of it the last few years. So I hope it starts to grow again, live shows. Yeah. Uh, but currently it's all quiet. There's nothing happening, really. Is it fairly easy or non-bureaucratic to book shows here in Leiden, or is it... Or is it complicated with the city and permits and things like that do you have a fairly no, smooth thing or do you have to do a lot of pre-planning like a year in advance or something like that no no and it helps that i do programming at the venue here okay so i'm a volunteer at the venue and i'm a part of the programming group so basically i can i have the space to do my own stuff and, okay uh, i can I heard, pick I, some dates and yeah. i also heard you were involved in designing their choosing the sound system which yeah. is really really great sound system here well I'm, there are more people that, are, that have more experience with sound that helped us pick the sound system. I just am responsible for getting some bigger subs. Yeah. You, uh, the, that's, but that's the best yeah. part is the subs. Like, yeah. you, can, you can hear like the, you can feel the 12 hertz waves like boom, 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 yeah. boom. Yeah, like exactly. going back and forth, it's crazy. 
Yeah, it always gives me a huge smile when I start hearing the bass. And, yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool, Jim. Well, cheers. Thank you so much for doing this, and thank, thank you for you. talking with me for a moment. And thank we'll you. see where our next guest is. Okay, thank you. I'm now here with, please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Osku of Moosehead from Finland or Os Brussels you or are, Finland or Brussels. You're a Finnish guy living in Brussels, right? Yes. And you record as Moosehead. You played already and it was great. Um, Thank you. My question is, I've heard that you've been active in the noise scene and recording since like the 90s. Maybe you told me that, maybe I read that somewhere. But yeah, it's only in the, in the past couple of years that I've seen like a lot of releases coming out. Yeah, uh, what's your what's your history there with with, I, with I, the project I, and with noise? I started in '96. the The first demo tape mm -hmm. came out January '96, I think, and I didn't do that much back then, but. Um, then after five years or so, I kind of stopped. Uh, and now then, I don't know, uh, maybe COVID was one thing that gave a boost when being unemployed yeah. <laughs> and COVID going on, uh, I started again. Okay. And that was 2020. Okay. Yeah. And since then, I've been pretty happy with the, the sounds I, uh, yeah. I get out of the pedal. So yeah. I, I've been now, let's say, pretty active. Yeah. Recording a lot, how, playing so, a lot yeah, so how at do, home. How does it feel to be playing again? Uh, great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, well, always loved noise. Yeah. Uh, so it's... Yeah, I, yeah. I was gonna say now I can do it cheaper. Uh, I can just play, but yeah. Instead of uh, buying it, you mean listening to it? Uh, but no, then it's uh, you buy a pedal. Uh -huh, it's uh -huh. not cheap. <laughs> you play, then you buy another pedal, and I still buy lots of records. So sure, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, you yeah. know. Yes, I know. Yeah. 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 Um, how? Why do you live in Brussels? Um. If I might ask, it's... Yeah, you know, basically because of my wife's work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And how long have you lived? Uh, 18 years. Okay. Do you speak all the languages? All the... the. Uh, I can order a beer in in all languages, but okay. that's pretty much... I know some Dutch, yeah. but not too much. French is impossible. Yeah. Do you feel uh, connected to the Finnish? scene do you feel like a strong very much um, like do you feel like you're you're a Finnish noise artist yes yeah absolutely what's Finnish noise all about in your in your e words, enjoyment right? enjoyment yeah the okay. joy of noise okay yeah cool <laughs> your sound I mean there's the there's a lot of you know typical Finnish sounds I guess or you know junk metal some people talk about kind of a rural sound um, but you're, you seem to have other influences also, like more, uh, like, like a lot of Japanese noise influences, right? is that true? Yeah, I'm a big, big fan of Japanese noise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And junk metal, I, I guess I would have more junk metal if I lived somewhere else, not, uh, like, like Finland. It's, I, I'm, re uh, no, not necessarily, but, uh, let's say if I rehearsed and recorded yeah uh, not at home yeah uh, I don't think my wife would appreciate uh, <laughs> sheet metal uh, at home uh, chains and uh, well maybe rusty, that's, maybe that uh, is one simple explanation for this uh, like junk metal sound in Finland as opposed to other places because okay for example in Brussels you probably live I've never actually been to Brussels but it's a no I have it's a very big city quite I mean, quite it's, quite densely populated. Yeah, it's I kind mean, of a big city, but compressed. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I mean, you don't have a big backyard to no. to throw around some 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 barrels and things like that. You're you know you're confined to a probably yeah. a, a, an apartment of some sort or a house with 
you know, with maybe neighbors, whereas Finland, it seems like a lot of people just by nature live with room where they can really, you know, fire things up and throw stuff around without bothering people. Yeah, at least many of the active guys, they live in places where they can just go crazy. Yeah. What do you think about the new uh, Finnish artists coming uh, out right now? Like, how do you, what do you... Like in the last couple of years. The past couple of years, years uh, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. What are some favorites? Favorites? Uh, well, Aprapat. Um, other favorites. Are Not there um, any that... Okay. Yeah, Umpio, uh, but, well, he's already older, but... Aprapat has like become quite well known, and I think a lot of people are giving him his well-deserved uh, attention. Are there any projects, Finnish projects... Um, that still seem to be undiscovered or underappreciated that you can really um, that you really are into. Yeah, uh, Amek Mai. That right. it's there are tapes out, yep. uh, but I never really see him mentioned anywhere. Anywhere, but it's great stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, other than I don't, I don't really. Uh, I don't have any insider information. I don't know any uh, okay. secrets, Secret unreleased, projects? Uh, super underground stuff. Okay. Um, is this the first show you've played since being back yeah. active with, with Moosehead? Did you play? Or, or even before. Ever. Uh, this, this was the first one ever. This is the first Moosehead yes. set ever? Yes. Wow. <laughs> How did you feel about it? That was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. That was loud. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Louder is more good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. Cool. Well, do you think you're going to be playing more shows now that things seem to be more opening up and possible and you're, you're active? Yeah. Again? You yeah. Yeah. Especially now with COVID, maybe slowly being over, going more to the background. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If there are uh, possibilities, uh, sure. What's, what's, is there noise going on in Brussels? I, I don't really know at all. I I've been to a few shows, but that's that's it. I don't really know anybody. Uh, it's from Belgium. It's pretty much just uh, Mr. Vincent Dallas that I know. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope things can. Uh, I mean, I hope you can bring your your Finnish reach and maybe spread some seeds where you are. You should talk to him because you should talk to him about doing some shows because uh, yeah, be Dries fun. has done quite a few shows in Kortrijk and then in that area. And I think if there are particularly more people in his neck of the woods that are also wanting to do that, that could be uh, something that could. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure he will. If there's any interest, I'm sure he will. Uh tell me that maybe yeah you should contact this and this guy yeah are you you guys are working on a collaboration too is that correct uh yeah have you done we, it yet? yeah we had two recording sessions uh and yeah uh first it was uh all digital uh, -huh. uh and lots of files got lost and destroyed and stuff like that you mean the recording yeah uh-huh uh, and then it was analog, and we screwed up. <laughs> Maybe not quite as much, but uh, but there's still uh, recordings, good material that cool. I'm working on uh, mixing. Cool. Uh, All right. Great. Well, looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, new tape out on White Sandy Noise. Um, Thank you for doing that, and uh, thank you for doing that. Very nice to meet you. I I, I like you also because um, oh, that's so sweet. your name is very similar to my name, so that's always yeah, been it's... something I've uh, been been shocked and and, <laughs> and uh, pleased by. So and learning so that it's actually not a Japanese name. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so cheers. Cheers. Thank you.
Tell me your name, please. I'm uh, Dries. Last name? Bernard. And uh, your product is what? My project is uh, Vincent Dallas. What is Vincent Dallas? It's, I, I, I don't know, I don't have a description, but it's a thing that is uh, in my head for a long time. And uh, it's, uh, it's a guide, uh, it's a guide to, to freedom uh, of expression, I think, or doing your own thing, despite the fact and the, the trends or whatever. It is, it's, a, it's a jump in the, in the, 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 the fine world of, of uh, emperor free, whatever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and who is Vincent Dallas? That's uh, it's my, it's, I, I see it as a different thing, but it's uh, me. But it's me uh, who come out. 
yeah. with my uh, feelings and my thoughts. Yeah. Uh, w w where does the name come from? It comes from, uh, it's originally it was from a friend and I who invent, invited, uh, invented the name for uh, doing paintings and stuff like that. Uh, it was my friend who, who said, hey, maybe we can call it Vincent Dallas. That sounds good. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, why not? <laughs> That's 20 years ago, something like that. <laughs> and okay. uh, under that moniker, we did a lot of uh, strange paintings and uh, throw with uh, paints and absurd uh, stuff. <laughs> okay. How long have you been listening to noise? Because you're a maniac. You're, you listen to noise like crazy. And uh, you, were, you also have been involved in putting on a lot of festivals. How long have you been doing yeah. this? I am interested in... Uh, in for uh, at the age of 13 in music uh, with older friends and then the noise came into also because of older friends also because of uh, bands like uh, God Bullies like Pat Yankee said oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Swan stuff uh, yeah. punky stuff yeah. strange stuff yeah. and the noise thing was uh, came from a friend who was uh, behind a big monitor making walls and uh, that was like 20 years ago or, or 18 years ago I was like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what, the, what is the purpose? He said, I'm just blasting and I like it. Yeah, cool. And then I go from the more noise rock experimental bands to more noise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do, you think there's a, do you think there's a fundamental or a general difference between how noise is approached in Europe as opposed to in the United States? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I think it's a different approach. Uh, even... Noise in uh, Germany, uh, Holland, Belgium. Yeah. Had a different approach than like the, the Swedish or the, the Finnish right. approach. Yeah. I, think, I don't know what the difference is, but I think it's more, uh, more um, how do you say it? Uh, re real is not good. Uh, it's more honest in the States. Really? And, and, uh, and uh, more punk way. Okay. Than, than uh, over here, I think. Okay. Yeah. What are some Belgian pro what, should, what are some Belgian uh, noise products uh, from history that people might not know about that have been important for you? Hmm. Of course, there we got uh, Club Moral. That's a very yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, other noise. I'm not I'm not sure about noise uh, projects like we know it from back in the days. It's yeah. I don't know of many other ones in Belgium other than you that are doing this kind of noise like you do. No, no, I don't. I don't think so. You got uh, Jim and Ural, right. who is also noise. And we know that's a very good, but that's a different kind of yes. sound. Yeah. Then you got the whole Krak Records and Ultra Xima kind of experimental sounding uh, things, but the, the real harsh, cruel, raw stuff. I don't know. I, I don't. It's not. It's sometimes it can be hard to find in this part of Europe. I think. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You got, yeah, that's true. Because you, back in the days with the festival, at some time it was hard to, to get good, harsh projects for the fest. Yeah. Because we got already a lot of them. Yeah. Not so many, but a lot of them. And then sometimes you said, oh, what to choose now? Because, yeah, that it's not really alive. I don't know. Tell me about the festival that you've been doing. Because I went to the last one you did, and you had. Kakerlak, you had Bizarre Uproar, you had yes. Altar of Flies. Uh, um, who else was there? It was it was a crazy lineup. It was a crazy lineup, but I think the years, uh, that year, I think also we have uh, Sufi from uh, Leda, from Neutral Play. Right. Neutral Play too, I think. Yeah, Neutral uh, Play too. I'm not sure yeah, that year. Yeah. But we got um, uh, Consumer Electronics, we got Vomir, we got uh, Jakob van Harle, Tommy Karan. Yeah. Um, have you been able to do those shows with like uh, city or, or, or government funding? We did like it some sort of grant money? Yeah, the first year we did it on a total DIY approach in mm -hmm. an old st uh, strip club. Mm -hmm. No money, all the entrants go to the bands. And after that, they, uh, the place was uh, closed. And the, the bigger club in town approached us, liked the ID and said, we can give you a, a budget and you can book whatever you want. Cool. So, so we were very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> was the last one? Uh, was that last one with Bizarre Upper? Was that the last one that'll happen? Do you think? Yeah, b because before that, we, we I stopped I stopped doing it for two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fred, the, um, uh, the the guy was a, 
for seventy uh, percent behind the lineups every year. Yeah, he wanted to end the uh, end the festival and on a good way. Yeah, w one more time with a good lineup. Yeah, and that and that was that it. was what what we tried to do the okay. last time. Uh, so and it's okay, it's done. Yeah. Sometimes now I think hmm, we can do it again yeah. because <laughs> there's a lot of going on. Yeah, yeah, an even better one. An even better one, but yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> You book a lot of shows, though, in, in Kortrijk. In Kortrijk. And is that something you will continue doing now that the, the ability is there again, now that the cities are kind of opening up and yeah, it's possible? Maybe. I, I, I mostly um, book shows because of, the, of they were on tour. Sure. Like uh, Gordon Ashworth, uh, people on tour need help. Yeah. I was able to help them out and, and, to, and to book a show for them. Yeah. And the last times went okay from crowds. People will yeah. know what's going on. Uh, but I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to continue like that. Sure. Maybe okay. you're getting older, been there, done that, I don't know. Yeah. Also, there's just one place left in, in Kortrijk. Uh, before that, you got uh, two places or three places, now it's done. So, I don't know, I'm, depends who's asking and... Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, do you, what do you see happening for you in the next year in terms of noise? What are your, what are your thoughts and, and ideas and goals? Because, uh, you know, Vincent Dallas has suddenly been quite active and has a number of releases coming out. Um, do, you have, do you have plans to, to develop that? Do you have uh, things you'd like to do with the project? Yeah, it's crazy that, uh, that Vincent Dallas is uh, having already three tapes out in a, in a, in a um, uh, little time. So that was not the purpose. Or, or I, I not take it for granted. Sure. I'm just doing it for myself. Yeah. And it's very nice that there's support, uh, yeah. and I hope to continue and to um, to explore more sounds and to explore other directions, or you know, yeah. getting it, making it still interesting for me. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I want to play live, not every day, not every weekend, but I want to play nice uh, events or nice, uh, yeah, ni nice events and, and, and places. I'm thinking to go to the states. Yeah. Too. Cool. Yeah. Great. Because I have a tape coming out on the label in New York City, so cool. I'm not sure about that, but that's also a goal I want to do. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what what role do your children play in Vincent Dallas? Uh, they play a role because I rip their uh, paintings, drawings <laughs> from their desk <laughs> and use it for uh, a tape releases. And when it's out, I say, "Hey guys, look what I what I did!" And they say, "Oh, that? <laughs> That's mine." I said, "Ah, use it, sorry." And they they find it okay. They they're gonna sue you someday. I I think uh, I hope for not. So uh, <laughs> I gave them a copy for free. So <laughs> so uh, I hope they enjoy it. <laughs> cool. But All sometimes right. you hear them, you hear the kids on the background also uh, of the, the records. Yes. Cool. Because I'm recording at home, just at home. Yeah. In the living room. Yeah. When I have, I have an ID, I plus yeah. records. <laughs> so sometimes it's on the background. Uh, <laughs> so cool. yeah, they they have something to do with Vincent Dallas. <laughs> cool. All right, man. Well, thank you for talking to me and looking forward to seeing you play. Thank you a lot for the support. Cheers.
I'm here with, this is Sister Rossi. Um, he records music as, he records noise as Sister Rossi. But people also might know him as something else. Wallkeeper. <laughs> I uh, traded with Sisto probably 10 to 15 years ago uh, yeah. during the harsh noise wall board era. Um, I traded with a, with a guy who, in Germany, who sent me a tape called Wallkeeper. And it was a very memorable moment in my um, journey in noise, oh, wow. if we can say it. Um, so um, you are living in Germany. You are German, but you've always, you've, you've also grown up in the States, or what's yeah. your, what's your situation so, there? So yeah, I was born in Florida, but my mom, she's originally from Germany. Okay. And um, in the end of the 80s, we moved back to Germany because, because of divorce and all that, okay. you know, life stuff. So yeah. With her? Uh, yeah, with her. She, like, of course, she uh, it was her and my sister back then. Okay. So we moved here. I went to school in Germany, and I've been staying here, well, not ever since, but I've been moving, I've been actually, I've been moving back and forth every, every couple of years. So, okay. uh, yeah, that's basically it. And you have definitely, like, I feel like when I talked to you, when I met you, you're like a, a USA, you're like an American dude. Oh yeah, I, 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 yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I, I do get that a lot. But I mean, you, but you, live in both worlds. I live in both worlds. Yeah, I, I try to, I try to grab, whatever's the best right now yeah. for for my for my situation. Yeah. So right now it's just Germany. I have a good job. I, yeah. I have a good paying job. Yeah. Uh, healthcare and all that. You right. know. Um, yeah, but I, I do miss the states. Yeah. I do miss the states. I do miss the States. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, um, I'm not. So you're like a mega fan of Harsh Noise. You have an insane collection. You uh, surround yourself with it. Um, what do you... What's your main stylistic focus or, or, or what's your favorite era? What's, your fav what's, what's the stuff you really go for? Because I've noticed you have yeah. kind of different, very specific focuses. Uh, yeah, well, my uh, my main focus is uh, is what I, I like. I guess you you referred to it as a golden age of harsh noise. I guess w was it you? I don't know. I think somebody I, like I might have, but there's many for it was sure. Like, yeah, it was like mid 2000s, electronics era, yeah. uh, era, yeah. and especially uh, focused on on that whole uh, California stuff, like pedestrian deposits. Um, Impregnable yeah. uh, and yada yada, yada yeah. you know, like that's that's basically that's what I'm looking for. Because back then, when the Tronics board was active, I didn't really have money, so I missed out on a lot of stuff. And I've been like the past couple of years, I've been just trying to get hold of everything I missed out on. So yeah, so that's basically my my main focus. What's it like to be at a noise show now after two years? Weird. I feel kind of shaky, actually. In it's, general, uh, huh? In general, like 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 nervous or? Well, no, no, not in general. Well, no. Nah. Well, right now, it's you know after after such a long time because I haven't played in a while yeah. also, and it's uh, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Also with a lot of people. Uh, a lot of also like friends. I don't know. I I kind of like. Don't really know how to how to socially act right now. Sure. <laughs> it's just like, should I? Uh, it's it's weird, but it's cool also. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And you're playing tonight. Tell us what you're doing tonight. Um, tonight I'm gonna play with my uh, with my good friend Jim uh, with our new project Misea. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it's basically just going to be it's going to be harsh noise, just straightforward harsh noise, just stop like start and stop. Cool. You know, just yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going for. Yeah. And when you record under your own name, what's what's that product all about? Because first of all, it's an interesting step to take to use your own name, and I've noticed you've spanned quite a uh -huh. quite a lot of different styles and and, yeah. and, and approaches over the mm -hmm. over the time. What's what's the What's what do you try to achieve with Ciso Rossi? Where you know when you record under your own name? Yeah. Um, uh, it's actually hard to say. I guess um, Ciso Rossi is just it's just like my personal. It's just personal stuff. Just mm -hmm. uh, like I often like I often said like when other people ask me like what's noise to you blah blah. It's for me. It's 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 not really. It's not really art to me, mm -hmm. but it's a form of um, coping, coping with uh, mm -hmm. life, I guess. Sure. You know, um, so Cicerossi's just—it's like we all have issues, I guess. Sure. I have issues too, and I don't feel like I—I could—I—I I could never go to see a therapist. I think you couldn't. No, mm -hmm. just, just, I, I just could—I could—I couldn't bring myself to because I don't really, really like to go to people and talk about mm -hmm. stuff. Um, uh, but noise gives me kind of like that outlet mm -hmm. to to just uh, think about stuff and cope with it, I guess. Sure. So. Yeah. Cheers. That's that, good. Is that cool? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, your um, your recent tape on the label uh, uh, Grizzale yeah was called three mile is it called Three Mile Island yeah what is Three Mile Island uh, Three Mile Island is uh, uh, is a nuclear plant mm -hmm. or was a nuclear nuclear plant that had like a meltdown in uh, the gosh. Way back, <laughs> right? I, I can't remember. I can't really remember the year, but yeah, that was basically. It's like, does that title have a personal meaning to you, or 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 is there a a, a specific reason or, or theme reason you, you chose that title or, or theme for the release? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's it's. I, I'm super bad with titles. I could, sure. I could like, I just, I just could like, uh, call every rele release untitled, you sure. know, because it's like, um, yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not so, so, so that specific release it's, isn't, I'm, isn't, uh, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in like, kind of like disasters like that, yeah, you know, so sure, cool, yeah, um, what are you gonna do for the tape on White Centipede Noise? Uh, Damn! <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure yet. I'm not like I'm not really sure yet. Okay. Uh, I, I I first I need to find a little time. Sure. Uh, I really can't tell. Yeah. I'm probably some field recordings and harsh noise. Okay. <laughs> cool. cool. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, so Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yep. Okay. See ya.
I'm now here with, please introduce yourself, Jim. Yeah, this is Jim. I'm, um... Jim uh, does the project URL. Correct, correct, yeah. Is that correct pronunciation? It's whatever you make of it, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, URL did a tape on white centipede noise a year or two ago. And uh, the tape before that, which caught my attention and really out of the blue, like, made me a big fan and, and, and I had no idea what, who you were, what you were doing, was the tape on uh, Throne Heap. Yeah. And how did that uh, relationship with uh, Tom from Throne Heap come about? Well, it's kind of funny. I never um, sent anyone like a demo thing or something, but I did with Throne Heap. Yeah. Uh, I just sent them some stuff. I like, hey Tom, I'm a huge longtime fan. Mm -hmm. Do you want to listen to my stuff? And he was immediately surprised or what? Uh, yeah, liked what I did. And then um, he said, like, you want to do a tape? Yeah. That was just classic way, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's cool because I mean, I, I mean, not to hype, not to like kiss their ass or something, but but Thornheap is kind of like a. In my mind, like a, a, a cult label, like very, they haven't yeah. been very active in the past several years. No, no. And they don't. I mean, they had a they had a time where they were more prolific, but still, it was fairly like selective, special stuff. And every tape has really wonderful printing and artwork yeah, and design. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's 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 a really special label, I think. So I mean, that of course was for me like just a, a, a obvious invitation that I need to. Check yeah, it out. yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Since then, I've really been into what you're doing. Um, yeah, for me as well, actually. For me, it was like this cult status it had, and I was a long time fan. Yeah. I never thought it would be ending up the way it did, and um, he only does like limited batches of releases every right. couple of years. Right. And it's like, yeah, um, you're gonna be thrown into like a batch with like Kjellstad or like Jeff German. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I mean, was that your first release of any sort as a as as a URL or as a kind of a experimental noise? No, no. Stuff? Actually, I had like uh, two releases before that. Um, one, my right. first release was like a super limited, the 12 editions. Like I've seen uh, it on Discogs, yeah. yeah. And then the next one was like also. Quite different, yeah, sound-wise too. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, try to carve in my my carve out my my own kind of a uh, universe in a way. And I think the the tape on Tronip is the first direct uh, evidence in that the direction. Actually. Yeah, you were invited to play this festival, but yeah. you declined. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Not again, Oscar. <laughs> I'm very, um, uh, how could I put this? Every show is like a new release almost. I never do like a show. I, I don't improvise um, mm -hmm. too much. Um, uh, and every show I do is like basically a new compilation of stuff I make or, yeah. And for me, it's really time intensive mm -hmm. and I didn't feel I was in a creative spot to do that right mm -hmm. now. Okay. Uh, I declined more offers lately to play shows. I'm like, I don't, I can't do it. Um, yeah. Do you see that changing in the next um, coming year? Or do you think that's something you're done with or? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I told someone recently I'm done with performing because okay. I don't have the feeling I can do the stuff I do on tape the same way I do live. Sure. It shouldn't be the same necessarily, but uh, I'm not. I'm not sure yet, man. Yeah. It was really hard to decline a nice lineup like this today. Yeah, but, it would have been. You would have. You would have been a. Yeah. Uh, you would have been the cherry on the on the on the well, top for I'm sure. I'm not sure about that. I would but, say um, that. I would be. I would be very, very happy. Too much praise, but. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's it like for you to be at a noise show after? Two years of nothing going on. Is this the first? I mean, have you been to many shows since things have? No, not so much. Up? Maybe like. Uh, three or four like non no shows yeah like uh, punk hardcore and stuff mm -hmm. um, it's nice because lots of people I know are playing today mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a, almost like a gathering of friends after two years seeing yeah. them for the first time 
It's a little bit of a family party. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not a, yeah, too much, but uh, it's not a family party, but like. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to see people I've seen, I haven't seen in a long time before. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I appreciate you taking a few moments to talk to me. I appreciate you asking I'm me questions. I'm sad you're not playing, but uh, I'm sure I'll just be, be patient and wait till the next time you do some recording or perform, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, same, likewise. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Thanks, bye.
Thanks again for tuning into White Stampy Noise Podcast. Head over to the Patreon for more, including private episodes of Noise on the Run, exclusive photos, video, and audio related to the show, and discounts at the White Stampy Noise mail order. Your support is extremely appreciated and vital to keep the show going.